Bye. Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, your daily cryptocurrency blockchain aggregated news show on YouTube. Look, look, it's going to be drinking. Look, look, it's going to be smoking. Look, look, it's going to be swearing. Look, look, you've been warned. So look, look, here coming three, look, look, two, look, look, one, bang. Welcome, everybody. Black, white, gay, straight, Christian, Muslim, Jew. My name is Shamari Clark. Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, the greatest show on earth, the greatest show in the multiverse. And the whole daggone thing, we have a great show for you today. Bang. So, you know, our usual Saturday show, it's kind of a loosey, loosey, you know, we just get a little loose, you know, not so much. Well, actually, it's the normal stuff. We're actually doing onboardings and shit today, but with that later on the end. All right, so let's just show you what we're doing today. All right, so first of all, Tomo Bridge. <clears throat> Interoperability upgrade, and they're being used by someone. I was an idiot. I didn't write it down here. So we're going to talk about that. You know these blockchains got to talk. They've got to be able to interoperate. All right. Well, that distributed app's got to be able to send some information to that smart contract who will then send some information to a legacy system who will then send information to a D app. Shit's going to get complicated. Shit's going to get complicated. Tech nerds like that. Oh, they like all of that. So we're going to get to all of that. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. And then Hedera Hashgraph is going to be used uh, to trace Australian food and wine. Good onboarding for them. We're going to check that out. And then Hushane. V chain adopts Coinbase's Rosetta standard. So I've never heard of the Rosetta standard before, but apparently there's one. And uh, Coinbase came out with a bunch of a bunch of other cryptos are on this thing. So we're just gonna look at that. I just thought it was interesting because I'd never heard of this before, actually. And then we're gonna and then the Chinese Chin, blah, 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 Chinese media covers crypto, and so uh, holy, everyone went crazy over this thing, but. It's worth talking about. It's worth talking about. Uh, uh, a whole bunch of websites had that story. And then and then the usual shout-outs and daily summary. So let's begin how we begin with a bang. Yes. Look, look. Uh, we got playoffs tonight. Uh, we got LeBron. Oh, no, let's take a look right here. Let's take a quick peek. Just a quick peek. Don't worry. Don't worry, guys. Don't worry. I know. I know you guys don't like sports. Some of you. Don't worry. Don't worry. Nine o'clock, all right. All right, so it's 8.15. All right, well, let's pump this puppy out, and let me get to my game. <laughs> look, look, we're going to pump this puppy out quickly. Let's do how we do with a bar. Nine, nine o'clock, I just had to remember what time the game was. Couldn't remember if it was 8.30 or 9. Look. Anyways, as long as you're there for the second half, that's the best part. <laughs> right? After halftime. You know, that's when they really... Anyway, anyway, look, look. All right, enough of the sports. All right, Bitcoin is $10,732. And when I left you yesterday, we were at $10,740. So we've gone down $8. Oh, my gosh, the market is tanking. <laughs> oh, the market's tanking. We're down 8 bucks, boys. Look. All right. Let me get a sip dag on. Fuck, I'm in a good mood. Hope everyone's in a good mood today. Hope y'all having a great time. All right. Top 10 of the day, brothers. Dag on usual suspects. Top 10. Oops. Top 10, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tether, XRP, Bitcoin Cash, Binance Coin, Polkadot, Chainlink, Crypto.com Coin, and Litecoin. Let's see what the market moves today are. Yeah, usual song, single digits up, single digits down. Single digits up, single digits down. Single digits up, single digits down. <clears throat> oh, look at urine. 16% up. Single digits up, single digits down. Single digits up, single digits down. 
So we're going to this episode goes down. Oh, wait, really? I mean, these really are just some skimpy gains and shit. All right, single this up, single this down. All right, so let's go see who lost some money today. You see anything on here you like, go get it because it is on buy sale. Let's see what we got. Buy. Yeesh, not much. All right, top 10 losers. DX Chain Token. <clears throat> uh, Ocean Protocol. Avalanche. Uniswap. Chain Link. Terra. Arweave. Ox. Kusama and Blockstack. Let's see who made money today. Oops. Top 10 gainers. Hmm. All right. Top 10 gainers. The Midas Touch Gold. Never heard of that before. You're in Finance. DFL Money. Ren. Ethereum Classic. Nano. Cybervane. Binance Coin. Theta. And NEM. Let's see what's told Mark Cap the days, brothers and sisters. Look. What are we working with? All right. So total Mark Cap of the day is $344.4 billion. When I left you yesterday, we were at $341.7 billion. So we've gone up $2.7 billion. Is that 2.7 or 3.7? 2.7, right. Look, and then 24 hour volume is 24 hour volume is $93.9 billion. When I left you yesterday, we were at $100.6 billion. So we've gone, what's that? Down, what's that? About $6.5 billion, something like that. 6.6, 6.7 billion dollars, something like that. All right, look around there somewhere, look. That's how it goes. Sometimes the math is good. Sometimes it ain't. Sometimes you get the chicken. Sometimes you get the feathers. Look. <laughs> That's how it goes around these parts. Look, look, brothers. Bye. Interoperability made easy with Tomo Bridge upgrade. So, I mean, let's get real. You know me. I love me some interoperability. I mean, daggone, daggone. These daggone blockchains got to talk to each other. It's one thing. All right, you got chain link. You've got a thing like a chain link, which will give you data to your D app and your, your smart contract. Now, what's another thing? You got to have the actual blockchains talk to each other a little bit. Wow, wow, wow. I guess that's the, well, you know what I'm saying? Pass data amongst, hold on, maybe I'm saying it wrong. Do you get what I'm saying? Like chain link is taking data out of the real world and putting it on your blockchain, whereas this is going to be, Blockchain to blockchain. That's what I'm trying to say, right? You got to have the blockchains actually talking to each other too. Pulling data from each other and stuff like that. You know, uh, like I just said, this D app's got to be able to give information that smart contract, which will give the information to the legacy system over here, which will send data to that other smart contract over there in Asia, which will verify whatever blah, blah, blah happened just now. You know, like some shit like that. It's like a chain. You know, like a, you know, they all got to talk. So interoperability is key. And I guess so from the investment standpoint. Well, when the institutional investors arrive, I mean, uh, I think the interoperability space <clears throat> of crypto from interoperating between the blockchain and the real world and then blockchain to blockchain are the two interoperability things, right? Getting data from the real world or even sending it on to the real, out to the real world, you know, sending it out to some server out there for something, right? You know, I, I think it should go both ways, right? Obviously. And then blockchain to blockchain. All right, so let's read. Let's read. It's all going to have to happen, so... You know, all this, all this, in, anything that interoperates with the legacy systems or, or between, or helps blockchain talk to each other, I am loving it, loving it, uh, loving it. Now, that's all I can tell you about that. All right, so Chompa Chain, a scalable blockchain used by enterprises across the globe, announced a major upgrade to its cross-chain portal, Tomo Bridge. According to the official announcement, announcement, Tomovidge version 1.1.0 1 
now connects Tomo Chain with Binance and Ethereum. Therefore, Tomo Chain users now can use the two way bridge to easily swap their Tomo with BET2 or ERC20 tokens hosted on their respective chains at lightning fast speeds. With this recent upgrade, <clears throat> Tomo Bridge introduced a new token, Tomo E. This is an Ethereum wrapped Tomo, just like Tomo B, which is Binance wrapped Tomo. Presently, Tomo Bridge plays a crucial role in the DeFi focused Tomo Chain ecosystem. Basically, Tomo Bridge acts as a cross chain transfer module to establish interoperability between Tomo Chain and other blockchains. Bang! Blockchain's got to talk. So, Tomo E on Uniswap. Basically, Tomo E is an ERC20 token wrapped in Tomo. The worth of one Tomo E at any given point in time is the same as one native Tomo on Tomo chain. So while Tomo E represents one to one value with Tomo, both are hosted on two different chains. So immediately after the announcement, Uniswap listed Tomo E. Oh, listed Tomo E. Currently, users can acquire Tomo E by swapping their Tomo using Tomo Bridge or can buy Tomo E on Uniswap. To swap Tomo E, uh, sorry, to swap Tomo to Tomo E. The users need to use MetaMask. Fill in the receiving Ethereum address and wait for the swap to complete. Okay, just in case <laughs> I haven't heard any of you using Tomo, but I uh, no, that's how we do around here. So look, <coughs> so we're not going to read every single last word, but look, a Tomo to Tomo E swap requires a minimum amount of 100 Tomo, and it takes one to two minutes to complete the swap. If you're doing Tomo E to Tomo swap, it might take a little longer than two minutes. Also, the network fees for both, the swaps are also different. Oh, am I just doing a commercial for Tomo here? Uh, swap Tomo E to Tomo, zero Tomo. Swap Tomo to Tomo E, four Tomo. Oh, fuck it, we're already here, let's read it. Tomo holders can also add liquidity to Tomo E's pools on Uniswap. The starting pools are Tomo Ether, Tomo USDT, and Tomo USDC. Based on their share in the pool, participants will share close to 0.3 of the exchange fees from trades in pools on Uniswap. So with plans to support more relevant chains in the future, Tomo Chain is currently enjoying price up price rally. In the last 14 days, its token price is already up by 42% while the rest of the crypto marketplace continues to face the bloodshed. <laughs> yes, that's how you use it. A bloodbath. It's a fucking bloodbath. <laughs> it's carnage. <laughs> lock, lock. Recently, we published some... Re <laughs> All right, brothers, settle down. Recently, we published some really exhaustive how-to use guys for Tomo Wallet and blah, blah. Anyway, so if you want to know about this thing, there's also a video down here. So you guys know that I always post uh, the links to these stories that I write in the comments. So if you want to watch the video, uh, just come on over. Just uh, cut and paste the URL into your browser. Navigation bar and bang. And you can watch that video. So bye. Inter interoperability made easy with Tomo Bridge Upgrade. Tomo Hodlers. Good for you. All right, let's move on. Bang. South Australian food and wine tracing platform teams up with Hedera. So... Uh, let me get a say, you know, you know how these things work. Uh, they trace the, they trace the product from, right from farm to table, right, and uh, you know, tell you what kind of soil it was grown in, what what the, uh, you know, what temperature the the wine was stored in, how long it was stored, the aging process, da 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 da, -da, -da all of it. Same shit VeChain does. Uh, and now Hedera Hasgraph is doing the same thing. Ah, so. This is a uh, this is a government-backed supply chain thing, though, too. So that's what makes this a little more special than the ones. Because VeChain, there's an Australian wine company called Penfolds. V-Chain's tracing their wine, but 
that's VJ and a private company uh, coming together to make a deal. This is, uh, let me show you right here, Australian government backed. <clears throat> right? So. It's a government contract. Um, it's a government, a government-backed supply chain traceability platform called Entrust, and uh, they're doing it on Hedera Hashgraph. Okay. Well, I guess so. I guess maybe I should say this: they they're launching it on Hedera Hashgraph. I don't know if Hedera Hashgraph is actually doing the traceability or how it works. So let's just check it out. So. <clears throat> The Australian government-backed agriculture supply chain platform, Entrust, has announced it will operate on Hedera Hashgraph, a distributed ledger platform claiming a transactional throughput of 10,000 transactions a second. So, South Australia's Premier Stephen Marshall officially launched Entrust on September 20th, describing the platform's initial focus as protecting the wine and dairy manufacturing industries from counterfeit fraud in the global markets and driving efficiency savings excuse me, across agricultural sectors. All right, so here we go. Entrust is a software as a service platform that tracks the movement of <clears throat> that tracks the movement of primary products such as wine grapes across the local agricultural supply chain as well as the supply chain of the secondary manufactured products, in this case the wine itself. So tracks the actual grapes and then when it gets to the the wine manufacturer yeah it tracks that too so look geolocation time stamping and other key data is immutably recorded to hedera hash graph and is accessible via web browser or mobile application the beta platform is currently being trialed by more than a dozen companies based in south australia's clare valley wine region and is tracking the movement of more than 250,000 liters of wine the platform was co-founded by Grosset Wines, Jeffrey Grosset. Oh, by oh, I see, but okay, was co-founded by Grosset Wines, Jeffrey Grosset, with the Australian government providing one hundred nine thousand dollars to support the initiative. In trust, technical director Rob Allen praised Tadera's scaling capabilities, predicting that the speed advantages of Hashgraph will allow Entrust to target other countries whose economies are reliant on exporting wine and other agricultural products. <clears throat> Australia produces almost 2 million tons of wine grapes each year. As winemakers see the benefit of securing their Wine Australia Label Integrity Program data on and trust, it is important the system is fast, cost-effective, secure, and scalable. All right, so this Entrust thing, it sounds like it's not one company. It's an Australia government thing, and a whole bunch of companies are going to use this Entrust thing. So this is really Hedera Hashgraph is being used, and all a bunch of companies <clears throat> are going to be using the Entrust thing, thus also using the Hedera Hashgraph. So in late August, the Australian Department of Industry announced that local working groups targeting the supply chain and credentialing sectors had been established to support Australia's National Blockchain Roadmap Steering Committee. All right. So several blockchain-based supply chain traceability solutions have also established a foothold in Australia, with VeChain partnering with hundreds of Australian businesses in recent years. I didn't know about hundreds of them. I've heard a few of them. All right, all right. Uh, oh, there's a line under the word hundreds. All right, let's look and see what this hundreds is. I don't know about hundreds. Oh, an association. Oh, well, exactly. Okay, so. All right, that's a good way to say it. All right, all right, so. Right, and that's what Hedera Hashgraph is, is, is basically. This isn't an association. It's an Australian uh, platform called Entrust, but in it is going to be hundreds of, food and wine companies so you could say Hedera Hashgraph has onboarded hundreds of companies it's the same with the V-Chain thing in, in France <clears throat> there's that V-Chain uh, the France uh, 
we read about it. I don't remember the exact name of the association, but it was the food. It was like a food and wine thing for, for France. Uh, and uh, there you're going to use VeChain for their thing. So, uh, you know, you can kind of, you know, I don't know how you guys want to look at it, but I look at it as hundreds of onboardings, just the way this guy said it here, hundreds of onboardings. So I look at this as Hedera and Hashgraph has just onboarded hundreds of companies. You know what I mean? Uh, they all have to pay them to use this thing. And so, well, if you're getting paid, it's an onboarding, right? <laughs> Yeah, that's a customer. All right, so, but it's not really the company; it's the association. Look, fuck stick. Just, it's not split hairs. Okay, so anyways, it, it, but, but but bottom line is generating revenue. <laughs> you know what we're all about around these parts: generating revenue. All right, so look. All right, so while the agricultural focused platforms, Ag Live and Beef Ledger, have seen success targeting the local beef industry. So, Hedera Ashcraft is also expanding its presence down under, having launched a DLT-powered micropayments pilot with Australia's leading point-of-sale technology provider, <laughs> EFT Post, in July. Bang! Oh, so they're pulling a... So, you see what they're doing? They're pulling a, a, they're pulling a, a dash by, by partnering with the point-of-sale provider, right? That's I, I told you about this, about dash. You know, dash, you know, this wannabe money thing. Uh, what what is cool about Dash is, like I told you, I don't think people are going to ever wake up and, you know, magically want to buy stuff with crypto. But what I do like about the way Dash is going about <clears throat> getting this, you know, mass adoption thing going for them, at least in their coin, is they, they don't go, they don't ask Starbucks, hey, uh, Starbucks, will you accept Dash? No, they go to the point of sale provider. Yeah, and they go, hey, can you put us in your thing, <laughs> in your point of sale device? And if they say yes, yes. And so they go to the leading point of sale device providers in the country. So if they can grab, like, let's say four out of five at the top. All right. Well, that's covering, you know, 75% of the country. <clears throat> yeah, that's how they did it in Venezuela and, uh, and in Colombia. They don't bother asking the company. They just go to the point of sale divider. Anyway, so that's what it said right here. Hedera Hashgraph is doing with the point of sale providers, <laughs> right? Bye. All right, so that's a, I, li I like that end around. Fuck asking Starbucks if they want to take it. You're taking it now, homeboy. I'm on your point of sale device. And so there you go. Hedera Hashcraft Hodlers. Bye. Wow, that's a major government contract right there. It's a major government contract. Tracking that food. Tracking that daggone food. That's the way the future is going to be, man. Fuck about 10 years from now, if you can't tell where your food's from, Hey, you might not want to be eating that shit, right? Oh. Might not want to be eating that shit. I told you about that company here in Miami. Yeah, they got they got caught selling horse meat. Uh, uh, I mean, I know horse meat is a delicacy in Europe, but not around these parts. <laughs> and when they got caught, yay! So you want to know for sure where that... Well, first of all, you want to know what the meat is. Never mind just where it came from and all that. So, all right. So, bang. Good stuff. All right. Then, B-Chain adopts Coinbase standard to foster blockchain adopt. Bang. So, <clears throat> this isn't anything special. In terms of other, uh, many blockchains are using this, uh, this thing here. This uh, Rosetta standard. So, I just thought it was interesting. I'd never heard of it before. And since VeChain's doing it, I thought, well, since 99% of you are VeChain holders, myself as well, I figured, well, hey, it's Saturday. Let's just check it out. You know, Saturday's a nice loose day. I just chill out, you know, loose. Talk about what we want around these parts. I don't have to be all serious all the time. Look, all right, let's check it out. Yeah, so Coinbase made this thing. So first of all, I should just say this Rosetta Standard, okay? So Coinbase made this, and cryptos are adopting it. All right, so <clears throat> let's check it out. 
Uh, VeChain Foundation announced the implementation of the Rosetta blockchain standard for VeChain. The standard was developed by Coinbase and unveiled on June 17, 2020. So it just came out, and but a bunch of people are using it. So its goal is to simplify interaction with the blockchain. In this case, VeChain Thor. Oh, in this case, VeChain Thor. And give developers tools to facilitate, accelerate, and simplify integration with other blockchains. So this is sort of a an interoperability story. Uh, this helps to simplify integration with other blockchains. So at the time of Ros Rosetta's launch, Coinbase stated, we're launching Rosetta, an open source specification and set of tools that makes integrating with blockchains faster, or oh, sorry, sorry, simpler, faster, and more reliable. This is a step toward our commitment to support an open ecosystem. So, as you can see right here, so VeChain joins, Car joins Cardano, Tron, and Neo with Coinbase Standard. Uh, I'd never heard of this thing before, so I don't know. So, the growing number of blockchains has prompted Coinbase to create the Rosetta Standard. Thus, integration between such blockchains becomes a painless and safe process. In addition, Developers can take advantage of the compatibility that Rosetta offers with the platforms that have integrated it. So, all right, let's read along a little bit. According to Coinbase, for developers of new blockchain projects, the Rosetta interface makes it easier to ensure compatibility with exchanges that use Rosetta and can dramatically speed up the time it takes exchanges to integrate with new blockchains and protect customer funds by ensuring specific security conditions are met. Bang. And so what I like about that is, wow, they said that it'll speed up the time for you to get on the exchanges, to get integrated. And so, well, I guess what I'm assuming here is now that VeChain's done this, well, Coinbase ought to be listing that shit soon, shouldn't they? Look, look. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? <laughs> look, look. So because it's integrated with Rosetta, VeChain developers no longer have to write a parser for each of the blockchains. Instead, uh, Rosetta allows them to build cross-chain applications such as wallet and block browsers with a standard format and simplified maintenance. Since its launch, Rosetta has been implemented in more than 20 blockchain projects such as Tron, Kava, Neo, Ontology, Cadena, Sia, Filecoin, Near, Cardano, Coda, Handshake, Cosmos, Digibyte, among others. So, in the future, Rosetta could allow integrations with Bitcoin's blockchain and Ethereum. And so, I guess this is a Coinbase guy right here talking. He says, over time, our goal is to support a thriving ecosystem of Rosetta interfaces for many more blockchains, including Bitcoin and Ethereum, along with even more tools and community resources. As reported by CNF, <clears throat> Coinbase may add the VeChain token, VET, to its platform soon. In a publication, the exchange announced that they are considering listing the VET token. Fucking let's get to it. <laughs> Other exchanges such as Bitpanda are also considering adding VET. However, at the time of publication, this has not been confirmed and remains only a possibility. So bang though. So uh VeChain is going to use this thing right here. Um, it helps the developers to interact with the V4. Uh, uh, blockchain and uh it sounds like if you have it then 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 coinbase kind of right it speeds up the time <laughs> it takes for the exchanges to integrate with your blockchain uh so i don't know let's see let's see what happens uh good to know all right so i just wanted you guys to be updated on that and then finally bang china state-owned media covers cryptos as 2020's best performing assets Driven by DeFi and a weak dollar. Bang! Yes. Now it's getting some money talk. So look, look, fuck sticks. Look, look, brothers and sisters. You know how it works. In China, it, when something comes on your TV screen, as a Chinese citizen, you understand that the Communist Party of China is allowing me to see this. Right? It's not like here in America... Or in probably where you live. Yeah, well, you just get to choose what the hell you want to look at. Nah, China censors what is seen by their public. 
right? Down to the minutiae, down to the fine little details, right? If you Google Tiananmen Square in China, yeah, it shows you Tiananmen Square. If you Google Tiananmen Square, probably where you live and here in America, yeah, it'll show you the the the, the pro democracy uprisings that got crushed back in the days, right? And so um, <clears throat> they control everything. And so China went on a little media blitz the other day, telling everybody in China how good crypto was and how it was the best asset performer in the world. Now, I'm just going to talk some shamari talk now. This is just what I'm about to say is pure speculation. I mean, I've said it before, but I'm going to say it again. I think China, what they're doing is they're taking it real slow and they're waiting to launch their CBDC so that crypto folk don't care about these cryptos that are wannabe money. But if you notice, every month, China comes out with this list of 35 or 39, I don't remember the number exactly, but uh, of, 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 and of these blockchains that they rate. Well, why are you rating blockchains if you're not going to allow your citizens to buy them? I think they've just been preparing their citizens slowly. <clears throat> uh, to get ready to be able to uh, invest in cryptocurrency. Well, 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 the tokens of distributed ledger technology providers that are actually doing something. Let's put it that way. I'm not sure if China's going to let any of this wannabe money stuff in. Uh, Bitcoin probably, but all the rest of it. Right? Like Bitcoin's different because it's not owned by a company. And so that's different. Where's all this, you know, privately issued money stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, fuck that. I don't see the Chinese allowing that. I don't really see that going down. Um, and so, but... um. But and so what happened is, uh, yeah, the Chinese went on this little media blitz the other day, started telling their all their people uh, how great an asset class crypto is. When you're at the Chinese Communist Party, you don't just tell your people that for nothing. What are you teasing them? What are you going to tell them how great it is and then not let them have it? That's kind of a dick move, is <laughs> you know. That's like that's like you know. That's like if if you if you see if you're in the desert and you see some uh, some some guy he, he he you know a dehydrated guy and you're like hey yeah well yeah, I got a whole cooler <laughs> you know I got a whole cooler full of water right here I got a whole cooler full of Dasani yeah but you can't have any. That's dickish, isn't it? That's that's not very nice. Or it's not very neighborly. And so, I, I, and that's what I'm saying. I think the Chinese, I think next year we're going to see the Chinese unleash their people on us. For real. I've been saying this since 2018. Well, I've told you the truth since 2018. I think China is just taking it in a very slow, controlled fashion. A slow, controlled fashion. And, uh, and like I say, like China controls everything. And so... I don't think they're not going to allow, you know, like ICOs and any kind of this crypto that could be a scam, right? But you see how China comes out with their little list every month. Well, not a little list. I mean, it's a pretty good list. Uh, 35 of them every month. I think those are the ones that they're going to let people buy. Personally, they're saying they're good. They're like, here, yeah, oh, this one, oh, it, it's technology is great. Oh, this one, it's fast. This one, that. Ah, well, why aren't you going to let your people buy it? Of course they're going to start letting. And I think next year, once the CBDC part comes out and they get the whole wannabe money part out of the people's minds and just focus them on those lists, like that list, DLT, Distributed Ledger Technology Services Providers that are actually providing real services and efficiencies for your companies and your government, I think they'll let them invest in that. And, uh, I mean, I've been saying that since the beginning of this channel, uh, uh, because you know, well, why do you say that? Well, just that, you know, why are you coming out with a fucking list every month? I remember last year they also told their people to go buy a book called How to Invest in Cryptocurrency, right? 
on the official uh, CCTV, China Central TV. And so I think they're prepping their people, getting them ready. Oh, and then we read, remember in 2019, we read about um, the Chinese banksters came out with that. Uh, remember, it was an infographic telling people about cryptocurrency. And so they're telling their people, they're telling the people, but they haven't unleashed them yet. But I think they want to educate their people. They don't want their people to be scammed, right? Because if you get scammed, well, you blame it on the government. Well, why'd you let me buy this thing, right? Because that's how China is. It's a one-party system, right? And so I know I've been yapping. Are we going to read this fucking story or what, dog? Yes, we're going to read it. And so, But anyway, that's the whole thing around China. That's where my brain is at. Like I said, that was all just Shamari talk. Um, but the signs tell me China's going to unleash their citizens eventually. Uh, well, why do you think next year? Yeah, well, because they're telling them about it now. I mean, you're just teasing them. <laughs> so let's see. All right. All right. So let's read on. Let's proceed now. Let's read what the actual story says here, though. Oh, hold on. Let me get a fucking, get a fucking sip first. Oh, and then let's actually, uh, let me just read this part to you then. China's rare, so down here. China's rare coordinated crypto media coverage could be targeting DCEP bull narrative. Exactly. Right? It was a blitz. It was a media blitz. Yeah, well, when that happens, that means the, the Communist Party of China is doing that, right? I mean... Obviously, that's how it works over there, you know. All right, so let's check it out. So, in an unusual coordinated report so it was coordinated attack report on friday several chinese state-owned media you understand state-owned china is not like where you and i live you know just fucking motherfuckers just talking shit and you can watch what you want it doesn't work like that it's state-owned uh all right so let's just read on so, in an unusual coordinated report on Friday, several Chinese state-owned media covered cryptocurrencies, calling them the best-performing assets of 2020. Well, why are you going to tell your people about that if you're not going to let them have it? Oh, cryptocurrencies are amazing. No, yeah, we're not letting you invest. Yeah, right. It, they're, they're, they're getting them ready slowly. They're getting them ready slowly. The country's top broadcaster, China Central Television, CCTV, ran a three-minute-long news clip highlighting crypto assets rallying 70% this year. Cryptocurrency has undoubtedly become the top-performing investment among several of our global assets, said the report. The clip also mentioned DeFi and the weak dollar as the two reasons for the crypto bull market this year. China is just getting started on DeFi. <clears throat> China is just getting started on DeFi said a researcher at crypto fund, the Spartan Group, who noted the, re the retail investors are likely to go for early DeFi projects like China, wait, oh, in China, like Dodo and MCDEX. And the blue chips, Uni, YFI, Comp, and Maker, that are also has a Chinese community. CCTV also covered Ethereum being the top performer and fear of inflation driving the growth along with the central banks experimenting with CBDCs as a bull case for cryptocurrencies, but government regulations being a major uncertainty. There's nothing following coverage today. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, sorry. There is another following coverage today on CCTV2 and... Eight, what? I think it means and PBOC and current People's Bank of China... Uh, encouraging accelerating DCEP adoption and enlarging beta test cases. So, previous coverage on crypto assets, top performance, 
seems to be related to this DCEP bull narrative in general, noted WN. So, all of this got the Chinese crypto community's attention, who shared the clip on WeChat as a bullish signal. Absolutely, I mean, the Chinese government's not going to let you see all this if they don't want you to. I mean, that's how they do it. They control what their citizens get to consume in terms of information. And so, uh, all right, so uh, CCTV's crypto reporting came after state-owned news agency Xinhua, which also published an article titled Cryptocurrency is this year's number one asset. So Xinhua, you know, that's the major. That's, I mean, you know, behind CCTV, that's the next. Uh, they published uh, a thing saying titled Cryptocurrency is this year's number one asset. Again, the Chinese government is not going to tell people, yo, look at this number one asset and then not let you go get it, right? Um, eventually. Prior to its digital version on Xinhua, the same article appeared on one of the longest running state media Kankao Shaoshi in print form. Such a rare coordinated effort. So what they're saying is all these companies just came out, uh, sorry, 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 media outlets came out with crypto stories, just bang, 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 all of a sudden, right? So, and that's what they're saying here. So such a rare, such a rare coordinated effort is at odds with China's uh, stance on speculation. Well, the and let me say it this way. Our perceived stance, we don't really know what China's stance is yet. We know Xi, uh, Xi Jinping loves, uh, well, blockchain in general. Um, fuck, it felt like a bug just went away. Um, and we know that they're adopting it. They, they launched the uh, that government... Uh, we just read it yesterday, right? The BSN, the Blockchain Service Network and stuff. So um, if you're going to launch something like that, well, not if, they are. It, it is launched. And so, well, why wouldn't you let me invest in it, right? And so, I don't know. That, like I said, this is just me talking. This is just Shamari talking. I could be completely wrong. I could, Maybe they say, yeah, you guys are allowed to build stuff on blockchain, but nah, we're not going to let you buy anything. But that's stupid. I mean, that that's not going to happen because why are you telling everyone, you know, how great of an asset it is, right? <laughs> that's a little silly. And so that was a silly thing to say. So if there was a parallel financial system, <laughs> if there was a parallel financial system that could rival the dollar-based system, they would love to be part of it, China. They've been trying for years, ever since I've been in the markets. China and Russia have tried. China or Russia and the Iranians have tried. They came out with SDRs, uh, special drawing rights, SDRs, uh, all sorts of stuff to get around the dollar, but everyone wants the dollar, so stop it. <laughs> yeah, because we can't be attacked, you idiot. What, 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 we want the ruble to be the reserve currency? <laughs> Y'all fuck all that. So look, or the or the Chinese yuan. Look, ain't gonna happen. Um. Anyway, so that's enough. That's enough. So, that's it. I just wanted to show you guys. Bang. Um, the Chinese state-owned media the other day they just boom launched. I mean, it was a tiny little report. So let's get real. It wasn't some big mega thing, but just the fact that you see Chinese state-owned media covering crypto. Shows you, you know, the Chinese, like I said, in China, when you get to see something in your media, that means it's state sanctioned. In other words, it means that the Chinese uh, Communist Party says, yes, we don't mind you looking at this, you know. Uh, you know what I mean? It's not like here in our countries where the media can call the president an asshole and the shithead and the fuck face and the, all that. <laughs> Yeah, it's not like that, right? Yeah, I dare you. Oh, hey. But you know what I mean? It's all, it's it's controlled. And so the fact that crypto came out under that controlled environment shows us, well, that's what they're telling their people, right? And so uh, 
and I've told you guys here since 2018, um, I think it's going to be a slow rollout uh, when it comes to China. Uh, I mean, even Justin Williams, he showed us, you know, the Chinese really are, are even educating their people about it first. Um, so that's what I think is going on. I think they're going to allow crypto investment for these regular distributed ledger technology providers that we're invested in. Uh, yeah, but like ICOs and like coin offerings and that, nah, probably not. And the wannabe money stuff, nah, probably not. But anything that's just a real company doing something, oh, well, why not? Fucking why not, right? So we'll see, we'll see. That's that's just my little, how I think it's going to go down, you know, with China, but oh, we'll see. All right, brothers, let's check it out. But what are we doing around these parts? Brandon followed me. Brandon, Kip, cryptocurrency entrepreneur, pet owner, above all nerd, above all nerd. All right, well, bye. There you go, buddy. Sunny B, spy lady. Love you, lady. See you, lady. Bye. Nerd. Oh, miscreants. Oh, band of rare day on. Look, look, Chief Viso. Yeah, for the Pasquayaki tribe. V chain masters, V chain hodlers. Look, look, look. Oh, yeah. They'll slap you around the head and eyeballs with that V-chain. Fucking fuck with them Pasco Yaki tribes. Look. Bye. Love you, brother. Love you, chief. Bitcoin Kong. <laughs> Not but the sea, but the bye. Beautiful brothers. <sighs> fuck this, man. I mean, this is just getting ridiculous. You know, I'm embarrassing myself. I'm embarrassing you. I mean, this is becoming an embarrassment now. All right, brawlies. Bye. <laughs> Stallion, sweetie. Love you, sweetie. See you, sweetie. My little red-haired princess. Bye. Yes. You know, I love girls with colors in their hair. Oh, yeah. Green, red, blue. Fuck all of it, man. Love it. Like little, 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 like uh, Barbie dolls or something. I like it. All right. Four BTC. Okay. What we got here? Cryptocurrency signals. Daily 20% profit. Daily four to six trading signals. Oh, one of these guys. All right. Let me see with a bang. Good luck with that. Lorna. Let's see. She got a picture. What's her picture? Oh, that's her. Oh, she's smoking a big old something, something. Yeah. Good, good girl. Get that fatty on the lips and have a good time. Lorna. Love you, girl. See you, girl. Bye. Edward Dicko, the Dicko family. Right, he's not even family anymore because he said that other thing. <clears throat> Anyways, I'm going to still just say it how I say it. Family cryptos together stays together. Bye. America. Rob, look, look, Ert. Yes. Like <laughs> that's Eva. Bang. Hell yeah. Get a yes for that Ert. Here's Kong right here. What's he talking about? Ooh, wow. What's he saying? Link, link, look, look. All right, there, all right. Let's give that link a bit of a bang. Look a little, little, little bang. Look, 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 bang. Yeah. There goes Kong. Kong knows. Kong knows. There goes, brothers. Let me get a sip while we watch that ass slapping. So that goes, brothers. You get revenue generating product in your portfolio. It's going to be a little bit of bang. Yeah. Your portfolio is going to be bang. <laughs> All right, let me get a sip. Mm. Yeah, welcome to the goodie room, fuck sticks. Welcome to the goodie room. <laughs> oh, yeah, all my subscribers. You know, you got you to gotta apply for the goodie room. Don't worry, my subscribers. When you're with me, you're grandfathered in. Bang! There we go. Bang! Whoop, let's go. Bang! Bang! You're grandfathered in. When you're old with Shamari, son. Penny up! Not but see with bang! Oh, he, what? Native warrior. Oh, also, yes. 
Another prosecutor, like a tribe member. He, <laughs> what's his picture? Oh, his family and kids. Okay, okay. <laughs> I thought it was maybe something a little more. Look, look. Native warrior from the Pasquayaki tribe. Look at his V. He's a V master. All of them are. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're setting up shop. Getting ready. Getting ready for the revolution. <laughs> Let me tell you, after this election, yeesh, we'll see what America's about soon. Look, look from the Pasquayaki tribe. Lerba, Zeba, the boy. Stallion. I know, I already did it, but dang on it. Bang. All right, her and Vinny and we're talking all sorts of just talk, talk, yap, yap. Talking about buying houses and all sorts. There's DP. Deep Entertainment. So, brother. Love the G, brother. Bang. What are you talking about? Lawmakers want to amend the Securities Act. Oh. Oh, this fucking thing. I know I was going to. I was actually going to do this. I already banged it. I did read it. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. All right. Bang. I mean, where's everybody else? There's Lorna. There's Edwin. There we go. That's it. Here we go. All right. Here's the, this is the last batch. Edwin Koval, the original. <laughs> Deep in the belly of the beast. Love you, Edwin. See you, Edwin. Bye. Oh, yeah, in the belly of the beast. <laughs> right in the belly. Black Mama, love you, see you with the bang. Mr. Percy, love you, see you with the bang. All right. Arge. Love brother, see you, brother. Love this little green guy. Bang! All right, that is everybody. Well, that's good enough. Bang! Let's get back here to the control center, to the man center, to the Death Star. Yeah. All right, back in the Death Star. Look! All right, so we had a great show for you today. Uh, So, Tama Bridge. Interoperability upgrade. You know, the blockchain's got to talk. You know, like I said, it's one thing. Chain link. They do the thing where they'll get you the data from off-chain, bring it on your chain. All right, but what if you have data on your chain and you've got data on your chain and you want those chains to pass that data? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Chain-to-chain -chain interoperability, God. That's what we need around these parts. Some chain-to-chain -chain interoperability. And it looks like Tama Chain, with their Dagon Tama Bridge, is going to do Dagon just that. Bah! Yes. Well, the fuel's kicking in appropriately now. Oh, yeah, we got the basketball game just started. Look, look. So let's finish up this and chill and kill it. Let's get me into my game. All right, but. We got to finish with our money, though. That's more important. <laughs> Fuck that game. Uh, Hedera Hashcraft is going to trace Australian food and wine. And so what is interesting about that is that's a government contract. That's a government contract. Uh, what was that fucking thing even called, right? It was a... Hold on, let me look. Ah, uh, it was called Entrust. It was a food and wine. So it is a food and wine. Not was. It is... Um, an Australian food and wine traceability solution called Entrust. And they're going to do it on the Hedera hash graph. So, Hedera hodlers. Bah! Yeah. And then B-Chain adopts Coinbase Rosetta standard. So, <laughs> I just never heard of it. So, that's why I read that story. I'd never heard of a Rosetta standard from Coinbase. I didn't even know what that was. And so... Good for coins, but, but and so, and I know all of us pretty much own, own V chain on this channel. And so, uh, just, uh, well, I hope that makes that fucking Coinbase listing come just a little bit faster then. Let's go, Fox Dick. Let's go, Fox Dicks. All right. So, bang. That's about all that is. Oh, but my bad, my bad, my bad. All right. Let's talk real. Let's talk real. 
It helps the developers. All right. It helps the developers um, more easily easily integrate with not only Coinbase, but it looked it sounded like other Rosetta enabled blockchains, right? And so, uh, yeah. So good for the developers and it's good for the whole ecosystem, the multiverse. Bang. And then China media covers crypto. And so, bang, like I told you, uh, well, like you know, uh, the Chinese media is controlled by the CCP, the Communist Party of China. And so they don't let you see shit unless they want you to see it. I mean, that's straight up how it rolls over there. It's not a joke. And so uh, the fact that they let their people in multiple on CCTV and on Xinhua, um, and there were some other things. Actually, I read the, I read this story on a few other websites too. There was a few other news outlets. It's like China did sort of a media blitz on Friday yesterday about crypto, and um, um, and you notice that they used Friday for their media blitz. Well, Friday is the day when people are sitting at home, usually ready to listen to the news, right? And so, um. Great, great, great. We'll see what goes down. I mean, I told you my little, I told you my, uh, what do you call it, speculation is that they're just taking it slow. I mean, why are you telling them about 35 cryptos a month? Why are you coming out with these media reports like this? Why did you tell them to buy the book called, you know, How to Invest in Crypto last year, right? We read about that here. Um. Yeah, I mean, what? And then you're not going to let them use it or, or, sorry, buy it? I mean, not to mention the fact that well, you've got your little internet of blockchain thing. Well, not little. That's mega. That's mega. That big blockchain services network thing. Well, if it's good enough for businesses to run on it, why isn't it good enough for individuals to invest in the individual cryptos that are on it? Right? And so... Uh, we'll see. This is all just speculation on my part. Uh, obviously, but that's what I've always said. And I think uh, I think by next year, I think once that CBDC, once China gets the CBDC thing part out, that will get rid of people's minds, you know, into this uh, sort of wannabe money stuff. And they're going to allow, so you got the wannabe money, and then you got the distributed ledger technology providers. Once the CBDC comes out, that'll wipe away that wannabe money. But all these distributed ledger technology providers, VeChain, Chainlink, IOTA, Stellar, Tron, uh, anything that's making money, IOST, uh, Singularity Net with the robot. They're going to let them invest in that, I think. I think. I think. And I hope. And I hope. <laughs> because we need those one one in five people on earth to do that. And so, all right. And so, that's it. Good enough. Send you off to your weekend. Let's shill it and kill it. Let's get you back to your wives and lives. So, subscribe below. Press the bell. You get an automatic notification when I do the show. The greatest show on earth. The greatest show. Look, look. In the multiverse. Look, my name's Shmar Clock. Love talking money. Bang! Love talking crypto. Look, look. It's my favorite time of my day. And so uh, I'll see you guys on Monday. And until then, hold tight, <laughs> I guess. Subscribe here. Bang! Watch that video here. Boom! Greatest of the multiverse. And I'll see you guys then. My name's Shmar Clock. Always watching our money. Bang! And I'm always on duty. Yes. That's how it works. <laughs> Indeed. Over and out.